The recent launch of ULA's Vulcan rocket took us on an emotional roller coaster, from the exhilaration of a successful Vulcan liftoff to the suspense of watching the flight path of the Peregrine lander, and ultimately the disappointment as the plan to send payloads to the moon faced setbacks, leaving NASA in pain and trying to gather valuable data while they still can. However, there is still another opportunity for NASA to potentially launch the first lunar lander next month, and that is the mission involving the Falcon 9 rocket and the Nova Sea lander. This mission holds the potential to reignite hope for NASA and space enthusiasts, opening up new possibilities for the United States to return to the moon after 50 years. So how does SpaceX plan to land NASA's first lunar lander on the moon after the ULA launch faced setbacks? Why is landing on the moon so challenging? Let's find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech. The moon dreams of NASA Astrobotics Peregrine lander are officially dead. Successfully launched aboard the Vulcan Centaur rocket on the 8th of January, the Peregrine lander entered its nominal orbit, embarking on its journey toward the moon. However, the story did not unfold smoothly as the spacecraft consistently encountered propulsion issues with fuel leaking, causing a complete deviation from the plans of both NASA and the private company Astrobotic. As a result, the Peregrine lander has lost its chance to reach the lunar surface and according to the latest announcement from Astrobotic, the spacecraft currently has only 48 hours of propulsion fuel left in the dark expanse of space as of this recording. The original goal of landing on the moon has now shifted to the goal is to get Peregrine as close to lunar distance as we can before it loses the ability to maintain its sun pointing position and subsequently loses power, as announced by the company. Eventually, Peregrine will become another piece of debris floating in space, and the last moon landing by the United States will still be the Apollo 17 mission in 1972. This is truly disheartening as this mission has been long awaited, not only to showcase the power of the new Vulcan rocket rocket by the space giant ULA, but more importantly, if successful, it would have marked the first moon landing effort, whether by robot or crew, by the United States in five decades. Meanwhile, the international competition for lunar exploration is intensifying, especially when, until now in the 21st century, only India and China have achieved soft landings. NASA's desire to win is more fervent than ever. As the global race for lunar exploration heats up, the question arises, what should they do next? Despite the unsuccessful launch of the Peregrine lander atop the Vulcan rocket to the moon, there's still a chance to turn the situation around. It relies on the upcoming flight of SpaceX's Falcon 9 to carry out the IM-1 mission controlled from Cape Canaveral with the goal of landing on the moon on the 22nd of February, a day before the ULA mission initiating something of a private space race. The recent Vulcan flight and the upcoming Falcon 9 launch carrying payloads to the moon are two of at least 10 planned launches through NASA's Commercial Lunar Payload Services, or CLPS, program. In this program, NASA pays private companies to transport scientific instruments to the lunar surface. These endeavors will play a crucial role in supporting the HSE's Artemis program, and more importantly, in realizing plans to establish a sustainable human presence on the moon. One of the main reasons leading to this is NASA's tight budget. After a Cold War spending spree in the 60s, with NASA receiving a peak of 4% of the total federal budget in 65, the U.S. government cut back, leaving too little money for further moon missions. This affects the ability to deploy crucial projects, while past space missions often have required significant investment. However, private space companies like Elon Musk's SpaceX have successfully reduced the costs of space launches, enabling NASA to plan for new and more costly cost-effective moon missions. Consequently, the competition among private space companies is intensifying, focusing on cost-saving measures to provide optimal services to NASA, who they themselves are a major client. With the next launch of the CLPS project, Falcon 9 will carry the moon lander named Nova C, manufactured by the company Intuitive Machines at its facility in Houston. The Nova C lunar lander is ready, having been delivered to Cape Canaveral in December. Since its arrival, the lander has completed major system tests, verifications, and certification processes. The remaining step involves integrating Nova C into a Falcon 9 rocket fairing in preparation for the launch window. We're ready to go, Tim Crane, Chief Technology Officer of Intuitive Machines, said in an interview. 
Engineers completed all testing of the vehicle's hardware and software ahead of shipment with no remaining issues to deal with before launch. We're really pleased about where we are. Nova C will land on a dark spot on the moon called Oceanus Procellarum. NASA's priority is to build a sustainable human presence on and around the moon's orbit by 2028. Landers like Nova C will help the agency investigate the terrain and take valuable cargo that will be needed to build a base. Nova C's mission is to carry five NASA-sponsored instruments and additional payloads from various clients. Among these is the Eagle Cam, a detachable device designed to capture Nova C's descent and landing on the lunar surface. The lander is expected to operate for one lunar day, approximately 14 Earth days, allowing some time for exploration and data collection. Of course, the company doesn't have just a single moon launch effort. Intuitive Machines is planning to launch three lunar missions for the upcoming year, all of which are to be launched aboard SpaceX's Falcon 9 rockets. In addition to IM-1, Intuitive Machines is also planning the IM-2 mission, potentially launching in mid-2024, and the IM-3 mission, which is expected to launch in the latter parts of 2024. These schedules could be accelerated further if Falcon 9 does not encounter launch pad congestion due to a packed schedule. While we hope for a successful mission showcasing the prowess of Falcon 9 and and Nova C, the challenging nature of lunar exploration becomes evident when considering outcomes similar to Astrobotics Peregrine Lander. Conquering the moon is no easy feat and uncertainties persist. The engineering challenge of a lunar lander is trickier than docking with the space station, and historically, many vehicles attempting to touch down on the moon have crashed. There is no atmosphere to help slow down the spacecraft using parachutes, the pull of gravity increases speed on the way down, and much of of the surface is strewn with boulders. Even in the sunlight, shadows and glare can befuddle landing cameras and sensors. Recent lunar landing attempts have seen equal failures to touchdowns. Israel's Bereshit lander, the first attempt by a non-government entity, was destroyed on impact with the moon in April of 2019 while Japan's private Hakuto mission, operated by iSpace, crashed in April of 2023. The moon lander of the Roscosmos Agency Luna 25 crashed into the moon and was destroyed in August of 2023. For now, the feat has only been accomplished by a handful of national space agencies. The Soviet Union was the first in 1966, followed by the United States, which is still the only country to put people on the moon, China has successfully landed three times since 2013, while India was the most recent to achieve this feat on its second attempt last year. Having multiple landers in operation is central to the idea of NASA's CLIPS program. Instead of funding a single craft built to rigid standards, the program seeded several companies to create their own landers and accepted a higher risk of failure. With the first CLIPS launch attempt, the United States enters an ongoing worldwide return to the moon. Over the next 10 years, years, space agencies and companies in the United States and other countries are planning scores of missions to the lunar surface. NASA's partnership with private firms like Astrobotic and Intuitive Machines reflects a practical shift in space exploration, in which private landers play a crucial role. These missions offer a cost-effective way to transport payloads for both government and private entities. Excitingly, it's an approach that combines public goals with private sector efficiency, potentially speeding up space exploration, and expanding our ability to work in space. It is still unclear how it will unfold, but I think the next step will be a significant leap that the Falcon 9 rocket and Nova Sea lander are ready to execute. Well, that's about it for today's episode. If the exploration of lunar missions has piqued your interest, ensure you don't miss out on future updates by clicking the subscribe button and ringing the bell, so you can stay connected with the latest in space and technology. Your encouragement is the driving force behind our cosmic expedition. And for that, we thank you so much for watching, and until our paths cross again, may these celestial bodies light the way to uncharted territories.